it's really important to think big, to try to, you know, not do incremental things, to think if there's ways that you can use your engineering background to, to solve really big, important problems. Well, what motivates me in terms of the science and engineering we do is, is, the, is the good, I believe, that can come from it and the good it can do to really change people's lives. When I was a graduate student at, at MIT, I majored in chemical engineering. Most of my colleagues went into like the chemical industry, but I was interested in medicine and I did postdoctoral work with a surgeon named Judah Folkman. And, when I, and, and that was at Boston Children's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. And when I was there, it was just very, very exciting to me. I was the only engineer in the entire hospital, so it gave me all these ideas about how I could apply chemical engineering to different kinds of medical problems. Translational medicine was not as common uh, when he first started out. So as a result, a lot of the techniques and the inventions that he came up with were sort of crazy at the time. Well, when I started, I had a lot of challenges. Um, I guess there were three. First, when I started publishing some of our early work, uh, a lot of scientists didn't believe that the work was right. Though later on, of course, that changed. People reproduced it. The second one was a big challenge for me as I tried to get grants, and my first nine grants were turned down, actually with terrible reviews. Uh, and a third challenge, actually, when I was at MIT, I remember when I started my career there, um, that everybody told me that I wouldn't even get uh, reinstituted as, a, as an assistant professor. And actually I had trouble finding jobs too in the, you know, in the chemical engineering uh, um, departments because a lot of people felt I, wouldn't, I wasn't really doing chemical engineering, I was doing more biology. So I had an awful lot of difficulty in my early days. The best thing about Professor Langer is he's incredibly creative and the ideas he comes up with seem to always be uh, sort of way ahead of the curve. Well, we've created a number of smart polymers. Maybe one of the best examples is work that Andreas Lendline did with us where we actually created shape memory polymers that could be triggered to change shape uh, by either temperature or uh, light. And so you could actually make materials that could enter the body through a small incision, like say through minimally invasive surgery and then change into any shape that you wanted it to change into. In nanotechnology, we've developed, uh, together with a number of my students and postdocs, the first really long circulating nanoparticles. And further with Omid Farrakhanazad, who's now a professor at Harvard Medical School, we've actually adapted those nanoparticles in ways they can target specific cells in the body. And they're now in a variety of human clinical trials for treating cancer and other diseases. Well, there's probably two, two general areas that I've been pretty proud of uh, technologically. One was the discovery we made where we could modify polymers to deliver virtually any, any type of molecule, because before that, people could only deliver just a few kinds of drugs. And the other is really the work we did with Jay Vacanti that really led uh, largely to the field of tissue engineering by combining polymers and, and mammalian cells. His experiences on all of these startup companies, being a founder, a serial entrepreneur, being the chairman of the FDA scientific board, all of these help him actually take these technologies from the scientific community and translate them and get them into patients. I think of him as a, as a uh, one person accelerator for medical technology development in the Boston area. Uh, in fact, uh, the nation and around the globe. He has been responsible for starting up numerous cutting edge innovative companies that are uh, making a difference in the healthcare industry. He is a perfect candidate for the jewel in the crown of Boston uh, medtech superstars. Well, I don't know if I'm really a superstar of the biomedical engineering world, but I, I what it, what's good is that you know, I think we started out, when I started out doing my work, it was really looked down upon, and it's nice that maybe now it's not looked out upon so much. I guess, I hope my legacy is that I've trained wonderful people who've gone on to make the world a better place, and that uh, the inventions and discoveries we've made have really uh, significantly improved patients' health and, and, uh, and made the world better.